So let's take a look at how the integration between Infoblox, DDI, and Genian NAC functions. The key here is to have actionable intelligence. What we mean by that is just not data that is in a vacuum and sitting in one system without any context. With the Genie and NAC overview, we discussed how there's network surveillance and visibility with all the devices connecting on the network. There's context, who, what, when, where, regarding all the devices. And because of that, we're tracking that information. Genie and NAC has the ability to use its vendor agnostic enforcement capability to control access when it's deemed that there's a requirement to do so. Infoblox, on the other hand, <clears throat> excuse me, is monitoring all response policy zone security event tracking. So it has a, a, a running tracking event log of any type of uh, event inside of a response policy zone in Infoblox EDI that may require some kind of attention. It's monitoring anomalous behavior of all the hosts that it's responsible for and generates the appropriate alerts when something is deemed a threat. If you look at the integration highlights between the two systems, what we're really doing here is we're extending the Infoblox RPZ capability. RPZ threats are forwarded to Genie and NAC, and we leverage the zero touch vendor agnostic layer two quarantine capability in Genie and NAC to isolate the threat. The result is both external and internal traffic is blocked in real time. When we compare this to some legacy threat detection and quarantine methods, the distinction is clear. If you have a system, such as a SIM, IDS, IPS on your network that is monitoring events from various sources, there are only so many ways that you can output this data and leverage it. If you output alerts only and someone has to actually review those, you're talking about manual remediation. This is very resource intensive, it's not real time, and it simply does not scale. Another common option is to out, output your events to a next-gen firewall. What you find here is it's going to be platform dependent, so the integrations may vary in their capability. It only blocks internet traffic, so that leaves your network vulnerable and all east-west traffic is exposed. You could potentially output these alerts to a radius-based NAC solution. Ultimately, what you have there is complex integrations. They're highly vendor dependent. They typically implement, uh, introduce a single point of failure, which means high availability has to be introduced. All of this adds up to a lengthy deployment, which means your, not, your network will be vulnerable longer because it'll take you longer to implement that solution. If you send your alerts to a layer three NAC system, using port mirroring, spanning, or some other similar solution, you could potentially have load or capacity concerns for large enterprise networks. Typically a TCP reset enforcement method is used and that may leave UDP or ARP traffic unchallenged, again, leaving your network vulnerable. Using an endpoint NAC enforcement, typically at that, with that type of solution, you have to have an agent or a plugin that's required. That means it's not BYOD and IoT friendly because you're going to have different kinds of devices, mobile devices, privately owned devices, or IoT devices that may not support an agent. In that situation, you're going to leave your network vulnerable and you're not going to be able to cover uh, as much of your network as you would like to because of those dependencies. Finally, Active Directory NAC enforcement is another option. Again, this typically requires an agent or a connector. It's not BYOD or IoT friendly because BYOD and IoT devices typically are not part of Active Directory and not on the domain. That's also platform dependent and leaves your network vulnerable. So here are some of the problems with the legacy threat detection and quarantine methods. So how do we address that? With the Genians and Infoblox DDI security automation integration, we address all the shortcomings of some of the various options. First and foremost, of course, we know Infoblox DDI is part of the network infrastructure and is monitoring all the hosts it's responsible for, for anomalous behavior. Once it identifies those threats, it forwards that to the Genie and NAC. 
Jeannie and NAC will match that on a quarantine policy and perform real-time layer two quarantine. That means that all traffic, not just north-south, but east-west, same segment traffic is isolated. This is not a complex integration and it can be set up in just a few minutes. There are no agents, plugins, connectors, or other add-ons required. So with that, we're gonna jump in and take a look at a live demo of this integration. First, we'll cover some of the components that are in our demo environment. First, we have a, we have a Genie and NAC virtual instance deployed. We'll log into that and we'll look at the data in the dashboard before we begin our demo. So here you have the main dashboard view of Genie and NAC. We're going to drill down to what is going to be specific for this demo. There are several nodes that are on this network. This node right here, 172.0020, is what we're gonna be using for this demo. So this is our Windows test machine that we will be isolating when it actually violates a security policy. The policy that this is going to match on is called InfoBlox Quarantine. What we're doing with this enforcement policy is we're dynamically assigning a tag anytime we get a threat from InfoBlox via a syslog alert. So no complex API integrations required there. We're gonna assign specific permissions when you have this tag assigned. Here we only allow a few permissions. Intentionally, we allow DNS so captive portals will load. We're allowing traffic to the Genius policy server and then our manage machine, management machine we're using for the demo. Also, we've configured an opt, uh, optional captive portal page where you can customize whatever messaging you want this allows your end users to be educated, know what's happening, know why they're quarantined. If you just black hole someone, they don't know what to do and they'll just call the help desk saying they have no network access. So here you can include things like auto remediation or other information to convey to the end user that there's a threat or an issue with their device and you can even provide some kind of action here. Next we have the InfoBlox Grid Manager. Inside of here, you have a configuration that we're going to review later that will actually send syslog events to the Genie and NAC anytime there is an issue or an event or a threat that it deems uh, necessary to export to the Genie and NAC system. Finally, we have our test machine. So this was the note we looked at earlier. This test machine has internet access presently. We have connectivity going to two different destinations. We're going outside the network, north-south traffic to the internet, and we're actually on same segment pings going as well to other nodes, uh, another node on the exact same network segment. So that is the demo environment itself. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually simulate malware traffic. So we have pre-configured a test site that we're going to use as a malware site. What you'll notice here is that this did not resolve. So this page did not load. Also, you notice almost real time, maybe one or two seconds, both east-west and north-south traffic has been blocked. In addition to that, you can see By doing an NS lookup, you're getting non-existent domain. That is InfoBlox DDI. The InfoBlox DDI is saying this domain does not exist. That's what it typically does when it has a blacklisted or a suspected malware site NS lookup. It actually provides that back to the device that's doing the query and then it won't be able to resolve that name. However, that device still would have network access had it not been for the Genian's layer two quarantine methods that we talked about earlier. Now let's take a look at the device inside of Genian's. If we go back now and we look at the enforcement policy, we now see we have one node matching on this policy. If we click on that node, 
we'll see that is the node in question. It now has the info blocks quarantine policy instead of the default policy. So the permissions that we discussed previously have now been added to that device and that is why the device has been blocked. If we look at the logging, we have a log filter for detection threat from info blocks. And here we see the non-existent domain RPZ threat message that came from info blocks to Genians. And this is what facilitated the real time layer two quarantine of that device. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take any questions about the presentation itself or of the live demo. All right, let's, uh, thanks uh, Brett, that's great. Let's, uh, let's look at the questions that have come in since the webinar began. First up, uh, what other actions can Genians take if a device on the network is identified as a threat? Okay, uh, let's take a look and see what options we have here. So we previously looked at the enforcement policy. Anytime we get a threat from info blocks, we're going to take some kind of an action. So we know what we did was we used our ARP enforcement and we assigned these permissions with the layer two vendor agnostic ARP enforcement. We also enabled an optional captive portal. Above and beyond that, if you had the desire to do something else, there's additional capability. For example, you could use an SNMP switch port disabling. So you can enable that. In addition to that, you can actually use radius as well. So you could actually say, send back a radius attribute, such as a VLAN, quarantine VLAN ID, um, or a downloadable ACL, some other kind of attribute specific to your radius environment that would be sent back to a wireless controller access point or a switch. So you do have other actions and methods you could take. Um, and at least, last but not least, you can also do an agent action if your devices on the network have agents installed. So lots of different options of how to enforce uh, once you actually fail this policy. Right, looks like the second one now is for, um, is for Dave, David. Um, how does Infoblox DDI determine which sites exactly are blacklisted? Hey, thank you for your question. Uh, this is done via response policy zones. At its core, response policy zones control what your users can and cannot recursively look up via DNS. Uh, this can be seen as a sort of advanced uh, or smart blacklist. Uh, these response policy zones uh, are configured one of two ways. Um, you have the option of manually configuring what you want to blacklist, kind of the archaic way, or you can enrich your uh, your feeds or uh, acquire feeds from infoblox that are enriched with uh, threat intelligence and event metadata. Um, RPZs really uh, address DNS security in an agile way, uh, in a way a lot of similar products don't. Um, as you can see on the screen here, this is the uh, the local RPZ that was configured uh, manually for the demo environment, showing that uh, you're going to get blocked if you try to access docs.genians.com. Okay. So back to Brett, uh, how difficult is it to configure Genius to process alerts from info blocks? Can you recap once again the, uh, the steps required to do that? Certainly. Um, so as we discussed a little bit earlier, the more difficult an integration is to set up, the less likely it is to be successful or to ever be implemented at all. So having something um, very simple, quick and easy that you don't have to have a low level knowledge of security or networking to enable is, is key to being successful. Um, so on the Genian side, we looked at most of the configuration. The key piece here that is actually triggering the policy enforcement is actually underneath the logging. So if we go to the detected threat from InfoBlox log filter, we're matching on this information, RPZ name, NX domain, it's coming from InfoBlox. What we do with that log filter is simply assign a security tag. So you just add a tag. And here we're adding the InfoBlox malware tag. As soon as that tag is dynamically assigned, which happens in real time, you saw how quick that, that node was quarantined, um, then 
that particular device matches on the policy and we do whatever enforcement methods you have configured. So very easy to set up. Um, on the info block side, uh, it's, the simplicity is also, um, is also very evident here. So under your grid configuration and your settings for info blocks under monitoring, you simply actually uh, create a syslog server and point that to the Genian's uh, IP of your policy server, which is right here. Leave your default information and then select what you're going to send. In this case, we're sending DNS, RPZ responses over to Genian's and that is actually what triggers the log filter on the other side and facilitates the policy enforcement.